uh, was big. I remember I grew up on the East Coast, and my mom when, was back when you know making a long distance c- phone call was something you had to ask for permission, right? Mm, yeah. And and uh, and so once a week, my mom would let me call a ski area out west and request you could call and request a trail map to be mailed to you oh, okay and so once a week i would call a, a different and i think i collected you know dozens of them you know and i'd call Vail and i'd call aspen and i'd call kirkwood and call you know all these different places and and request their trail maps but um so I grew up in an area where there's like a dozen ski areas within 45 minutes of my house. Mm. But here it's really like, it's hard to ask, like, what's your favorite ski area? You're probably just going to say Mammoth. But I don't know if you go far to go skiing or... I have, yeah. Um, not as much anymore uh, in recent years. But yeah, I've, I've uh, probably, you know, the farthest I've gone is Austria. Oh, wow. Um, you know, we were over there for a music, there's a big music convention over there like Nam. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we went a few days early so that we could say we skied the Austrian Alps. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so that was, you know, it must've been amazing. It was, it was, uh, also, you know, I've been all over Colorado. I've been up to Banff. I've been to Whistler, um, Tahoe, all the resorts in Tahoe. Hmm. Um, how was Banff? Banff is absolutely amazing. I bet. I bet the snow's so light and awesome. Yeah. And it's just, it's huge. I mean, Mammoth is huge, too, mm-hmm. but when you go up to, like, Whistler and, and Banff, you need a whole week yeah. to even make a dent in the mountain. You know, there are so many trails, and it just, it, and they go on forever, um, and, yeah, and it's just beautiful up there, so. Wow, that sounds awesome. Yeah. What was the snow like in Austria? Um, it was, well, when we were there, it was, it was pretty cold. It was snowing lightly. Um, so it was kind of powdery, um, and uh, yeah, it wasn't icy at all or anything like that. It was really good conditions. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I got. I mean, I got my start here in Big Bear. You know, my wife. Uh, you know, when we first met long ago, uh, she was a ski instructor up in in Big Bear, um, and so hmm. we had uh, we had met through some friends, and and I had never skied. You know, well, I had skied as a kid with my parents, but, you know, um, but we went up and uh, the first time I went to Big Bear, I went with a couple of buddies and they thought it would be really funny to take me to the top of the mountain and not tell me how to get down. Um, you know, Classic. Good, good old buddies, yeah. you know, and um, I remember we were going up, they used to have a, a, a resort up there called Snow Valley that's no longer there, but um we were at the top going up the chair and I'm, I'm talking to both of them. I'm like, so what do I do when I get off? They're like, you'll be fine. Just, just head down the mountain. I didn't know how to turn. I didn't know how to do anything. And they were both (laughs) snickering and laughing. And I was like, Oh boy, this is not going to be good. And so as soon as I got off the left, I, I just, I didn't have a choice. I start building speed and, and I'm, you know, waving my arms with my poles. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? And they're skiing next to me and they go, just turn. So what do I do is I cross my skis, oh. which just launched me into the air. And when I landed, my pole went into my ribs and I cracked two ribs. Oh. And so they actually had to carry me down on one of those stretchers. Yeah. That was my very first experience. Oh, and, man. and I was like, I'm never going to ski again. I hate this. And so it was probably six months later that Toby, my wife, um, you know, we, we had become friends. And she said, I want to take you up and teach you how to do it properly. Because it's really fun. I think you're really going to like skiing when you learn the right way. Right. And so she she did. She took me up and she taught me and and um, I I got I just fell in love with it because of surfing my whole life. Even though I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't snowboard, I, I, it's still just that fluid motion. Yeah, I mean, um, the idea of pumping and yeah. getting an edge on yes. something and carving an arc. You yeah. Know, all those those things translate in, in a way. Right. Yeah. So I just, I got very passionate and that's when I started traveling, you know, purposely to ski, go out to wow. Colorado and, uh, every year I'd go, you know, hit up, uh, uh, you know, Co- Copper Mountain and, um, Vail and all the resorts I've out there. I've never been to Vail. That's a, that's a, I, I have to go to Vail. The back bowl at Vail is amazing. I've heard it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I love, love skiing. Actually, you know, we're going to Big Bear this coming weekend. 
uh, to celebrate her birthday and see a bunch of her friends up there. I don't know if I, I think they're opening next weekend because they're wow. getting, they're getting snow right now. That's great. So, yeah. yeah, I love skiing. I grew. I used to be in National Ski Patrol. And oh, nice. My first skiing is actually. Um, I grew up on the property of a country inn, and um, and we had cross country skiing there. Okay. And so I used to teach lessons, and I ran the ski shop and all that, and I'd have to go track the trails by f- by by foot, you know. Um, wow. In the, in the mornings, you know, because we didn't have a machine to track them, and we had about I don't know, maybe. 15 miles worth of trails or something like that. And I'd have to go and do that. You know, if, if there was snow overnight, you know, I get the knock on the door. Hey, you got to go track the trails before school. And so I'd be up with like a headlamp on going and, and tracking the trails and then getting on the bus and going to school. Yeah. Um, but it was great. And there was at the top of the mountain, like, well, mountain would be foothills here, but in Pennsylvania it was called the Pocono mountains. It is called the Pocono mountains. And, um, at the top of our property there, the trails opened up into this birch grove of trees. And it was really beautiful. And some of my favorite memories would be, you know, be about dawn because it would be about the end. I'd save everything until the end of it uh, because then the last thing I got to do was basically telemark down, all the way back down to home. Mm. And, uh, and so I'd, I'd do all the flats area, and then I'd come up and do everything and end at this birch grove. And I'd have a backpack on with a thermos of hot cocoa and, like, a granola bar or banana or something like that. And I'd stop, and I'd take a break and eat my banana or my granola bar and have some hot cocoa. And there'd be deer out there stripping the bark off the birch trees and wow. eating it. And I'd just sit there, and there'd be, you know, a dozen deer around me just eating, and I'd just be eating having breakfast with the deer that's you know? so cool and then and then strap my skis on and, and telemark down you yeah know? and uh yeah geez just i haven't thought about it with that amount of clarity in quite a while so that's a special kind of thing but um yeah we went when, yeah. when we went to copper once we met this guy um because copper's got their own little village a lot of people just live right there mm-hmm. and work right there you know they have a bunch of little condos and stuff and um the first night we were there it was me and my roommate, and he was also National Ski Patrol. He grew up in Montana, so he he worked at Big Sky for a long time. And but we met this guy that was playing acoustic guitar in the bar on his break, and started talking to him. And he lived right there. He literally skied across the parking lot to work every day and skied back. That was his that was his job. Terrible life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we became really good friends. We ended up sitting in with him and singing some songs. And he says, tomorrow, he goes, I, you know, if you guys are up for it, I'd like you to, to take you into the back areas that nobody ever goes into. Oh, that's what a treat. And, yeah. And so we met him early in the morning. And we went and skied the untouched powder, waist deep awesome. um, for hours. We never saw one other person. How do you get back there? Um, it was it was very simple. It was just we just ducked off one trail that I mean he obviously knew the whole mountain from yeah, living yeah. there, but we just ducked off this one trail, and yeah, for hours we never heard anyone or saw anyone, and we wore ourselves out. I mean you just you know skiing in yeah, waist deep awesome. powder, and at some point I was like okay I'm I'm done. Yeah, let's. And he'd let you know like okay if you don't turn left here you're going to be hiking. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, there were a couple of points where he did take us down, and it was the first time I actually did a about a 15-foot vertical long, drop, yeah. you know, where we got to the end of this trail, and I'm like, I'm looking over the edge, and I go, is there another way around? He goes, nope. He goes, the only other way around is take your skis off and hike back out. And I was like, okay, here we go. But it was just a big pile of powder at the yeah. bottom. I mean, yeah. so it was amazing. But, oh, wow. but I remember when I said, I'm, I'm done. I, you know, fair. I'm, done. <laughs> I'm wiped out. I said, so how do we get back? He goes... He goes, see those two, tra- those two trees right over there? I go, yeah. He goes, just cut right between them. You'll be right back on one of the main trails. So the whole time, Amazing. it felt like we had gone miles from off course. We were always right next to a run if something, if something had happened. Yeah. Um, we, I mean. That guy knows the mountain. 30 seconds, 30 <laughs> seconds later, we were back on a regular trail with everyone on the trail. Wow, that's great. It was a, just a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Jeez. Yeah. Well, This has been a real pleasure getting to Likewise. chat with you. Likewise. I, I uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm down my list, but you're you got to come back and we've got way too much in common yeah. to not have more chats. You know, this is, this has been real special. Yeah. You know? And just, uh, you know, you being, I think I just kind of basically cold messaged you to, yeah. to, to do this and 
what's some serendipity that you and I have got, you know got together a lot for in this common. chat? Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll have to go play some golf and yeah. And play I, got, some I golf. want to come see your band. Yeah, well, it's not a band. It's it, it's it's this jam. I started it, you know, because COVID hit. Yeah. And so it was the end of March. I put a note on uh, next door and said, "Hey, does anybody want to?" get together on my, in my garage, you know, in the driveway, just social distance and just play whatever for the neighborhood. And this guy, Scott Horn, um, um, messaged me and said, Hey, I'll come over. And I remembered him because on Wednesday nights, I'd walk down probably right past your house and I'd go to Azar's yeah. and to just go play at the open jam there. I didn't realize that that's where all the day drinkers hang out. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a year later, I stopped in there for a burger on a Sunday to watch football, and it was all the same people. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what this place is about. All right. Nice people, great. Yeah. You know, and really reminds me of where I grew up in the Poconos, just kind of like they got their bar, they love their spot. That's, kind, that's fine. That's, yeah. that's my kind of people. That's cool. And, but I love jamming. You know? and I, I, I have three older brothers. They all play guitar, and I basically was given a pair of sticks and says, don't stop playing. We all want to play solos as long as we want. Yeah. <laughs> so you better hold a beat. And that's how I was kind of forced to play drums. And, um, and so got, had that jam, knew some people from there. You know, I texted out to a couple of people. None, none of them would. And then Scott messaged me back, and he came over. And we just like – futzed around instrumental on some tunes for, you know, an hour. And by the end of the hour, there was like maybe six or 10 people sitting there watching. And, yeah. was, and they're like, and I said to them, I'm like, Hey, if we, if I got people to come and actually kind of organize this a little bit and have some vocals and stuff like that, would you guys come? And like, yeah, we need something to do, you know? And, and so we put it together. I called it the COVID smile jam. And, and slowly it's grown to now every Saturday, every Saturday, I did it yesterday too. I sent out a roll call email, text to this twenty people, and say who's in for this week. And you know, eight or ten people will get back. I can do it. I can't do it. Okay, cool. And um, and then we just by by the end of tonight, we'll have the the list trimmed down, and we'll select songs that we want to do. We try not to do the same song twice. So once in a while, there's one we're like, that was great. Let's do that again. You know, but. No one, we don't rehearse together because mm. of because of what's going on. Right. Everyone does their homework and everyone shows up ready to play, and it comes off pretty dang good, you know. And and it's turned from just like my simple PA and my drums and maybe two guitarists and a bass player to now we've got a keyboard player and I've got a little bit of a better mixing board and we've got lighting rig and I'm doing a five camera shoot and I edited wow. down in Final Cut Pro and I put nice multi cam edits up on YouTube and. And, like, two of the players that come and play are, like, 15 and 17 years old. And they're ripping, ripping good players. And and they're, like, you know, they're savvy with social media. They're blasting out on that. And now, you know, three, four weeks ago, one of the directors for the local Parks and Rec came up. And he's, like, I love what you're doing. Can we take this to the teen center and do – you've got these two really awesome teen players. He's, like, let's do a drive-in concert. So December 5th, we're going to do this big drive-in concert at the teen center wow, and, uh, and, and make it more elaborate, you know, yeah. do instead of, we always just do it Friday from six thirty to seven thirty. you know, short and sweet and not annoyed. And our neighbors are wonderfully tolerant. We've been doing this every Friday for almost eight months now. So well, what's the Saturday thing you do that? Um, the, the, the Saturday, the, that'll be December 5th. Oh. They, they just, it's just a one-off drive-in okay. show they want so, to do there. So your, tip, your, your weekly show is Friday. Then. Friday, yeah. yeah. Like we all get together and set up around 5.30, 6 o'clock. We start at 6.30. We play to 7.30, maybe 7.45, and everyone's done and gone by 8. I'm wondering if I've heard you from my house. I bet you have because the wind carries there, the sound that direction. Because is there another band right in this area that plays... There's a couple other guys. So uh, uh, the Gunners down the street, Steve, he actually is the, has the CCR name, and he does Creedence, Creedence Clearwater uh, Revival Re- or Revisited. 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 Yes. And once a year, he'll do like a, a jam because he lives along the park there, and he'll play, you know, for I think usually on his birthday or something like that. And then there's another guy that lives up down, all on the same street that lives a little further down. He has a cover band called Honey Badger. And they've played maybe once or twice in the in the last uh, you know since this has hit, but but we've been doing this every Friday, and it's There's been a couple of times I've sat in the backyard on a Friday evening. And if it's I, Friday evening, it's definitely us. Yeah, and I've yeah. heard a mix of everything from Fleetwood Mac to Foghat to. Yep, we've done all that. Uh, yeah, yep. and I, I hear it pretty clear from the house. Oh, good. Which is cool. 
Yeah. Because I always, I always was wondering, because I, I told my wife, I said, I want to go see, I want to go watch. Yeah, come but on. I, but I didn't well, know I, where it was. I also do it, I, it's also broadcast live on.